Lithography works on the chemical principle that grease and water repel each other. All work remains on the surface. There is no carving. The artist marks the stone with greasy crayons and then covers it with a thin film of water. When the ink is applied, it is attracted only to the greasy image and repelled by the water, which fills the other areas of the stone. This artist has chosen to work on Bavarian limestone and is resurfacing a previously used stone. In a special graining sink, the artist wets the stone and applies carborundum grit. The surface texture of the stone which will affect the look of the final print, depends upon the level of grit the artist chooses. The stone can have a coarse, rough texture or a smooth, glass-like surface. By grinding with another stone, the artist can be sure that the surface of the stone is level and ready for printing. If the surface isn't perfectly level, it will break under the intense pressure of the press. In lithography, the artist creates the image by marking the stone with greasy materials. In this case, he begins with a liquid substance called touche. After mixing the touche to the correct consistency, the artist paints it onto the stone to create the background of the image. To transfer an outline, the artist copies the image onto tracing paper and dusts the front of the sheet with iron oxide. Since the printing process will reverse the image, he places the tracing paper face down on the stone. As the artist retraces the design, the iron oxide is transferred to the stone. Lithography allows the artist to draw freely, in this case with a greasy lithographic pencil. He could also use lithographic chalks or crayons. Because the skin contains enough oil to cause a mark on the stone that will print, a small wooden bridge rests on the stone to prevent any contact between the stone and the artist's hand. The artist can also scrape the stone to bring out highlights. To begin processing the stone, the artist applies a layer of talc to absorb the excess grease from the crayon and touche. Next, he brushes on powdered rosin to protect the stone from the strength of the acid. To chemically fix or etch the image onto the stone, the artist mixes a solution of gum arabic and a small amount of nitric acid. The acid fixes the greasy image areas into the stone and desensitizes the non-image areas from receiving ink. The artist adds more solution to those areas that may require a stronger etch. To ensure that all areas have been etched, the artist checks the stone with a magnifying glass. To prepare the stone for printing, the artist dissolves the crayon and touche of the original drawing with an oil-based solvent. Since the image and non-image areas have been etched onto the stone with the gum arabic solution, a ghost of the picture remains visible. Asphaltum is applied to make the image areas even more receptive to the greasy ink. When the stone is dry, it is ready to print. The artist mixes the thick and tacky lithography ink and then spreads it on the flat surface of an inking slab. With a leather roller, he spreads the ink evenly over the slab. Because lithography depends upon grease and water repelling each other, the artist must keep the surface of the stone damp with a thin film of water throughout the printing process. The water collects in the non-image areas of the stone and repels the greasy ink, while the image areas attract the greasy ink and repel the water. After the artist applies an even layer of ink, he carefully places a sheet of paper on the stone. Next. A few pieces of newsprint and the tympan are added to even the tension of the press. The pressure bar is lowered into place and the stone is rolled through the press. The paper is carefully pulled from the stone to reveal the finished print, which is a mirror image of the stone. 